Hello, today we're going to discuss force problems that involve multiple bodies or multiple objects. So far all we've looked at are force problems that involve one object. In this case though, you can see that there are three boxes and we're going to look at the forces that interact between them. These problems are all applications of Newton's third law. Remember Newton's third law says that forces occur in pairs. So if we look a little more closely at these three boxes, We'll notice that if there's a force that's being applied to, let's say, the green box. Let's say we're applying a force to the green box. And just common sense knows that the green box is going to push onto the orange box, and the orange box is going to push onto the yellow box, and they're all going to accelerate together. Okay? What Newton's third law says, though, is that the force from the green box onto the orange box is the same as the orange box back onto the green box. Okay, so if we draw little arrows here, we'll call this one F force A. Let's call it force A. Not a fo not an applied force, but just force A. Then the orange box is going to push back on the green box with force A as well, and then we know that the orange box is going to push on the yellow box, we'll call that with force B, that the yellow box will push back on the orange box with the same force. Okay, so Newton's third law says those forces are equal and opposite. Okay, we'll call this the applied force over here, we'll call this just F. Alright, so if we were to analyze the forces acting on the green box, let's just draw a little free body diagram of the green box, of course we have gravity, and we've got the normal force that F is pushing it to the right from our diagram above and FA is pushing it back to the left. Right? No surprises there. We'll do the same thing for our orange box. I won't draw on the scale because I don't have a lot of room. But we'll have FG again and we'll have FN and we see that FA is pushing it to the right but FB is pushing it back to the left and then we'll have the yellow box and our yellow box, same idea. But there's no force opposing the yellow box. Oops, FG, thank you. FN, and then we have FB that's pushing it forward. Okay, so we look at those forces acting on those boxes, and we're not surprised whatsoever. The biggest issue here, though, guys, is recognizing that FA here is the same as FA here, and FB here is the same as FB here. Okay? If we're pushing all three of these objects together, what do we know about their accelerations? Exactly, they're all going to have the same acceleration. Well, let's prove that here together. All right, so I'm going to keep sliding this up, and now let's look at some summation equations that act on each of the boxes. So on the green box, well, I said the sum of the forces on the green box. I'm just going to keep colors here, so I'm not going to do subscripts. We'll say it will be F minus F A which will equal the mass of the green, so I'll make that mg times a, probably not a good choice there, but we'll go with it. Um, on the orange, we'll say fa minus fb equals mo times a, and on the yellow, we'll say the sum of the forces on the yellow, because there's only one force acting on it horizontally, that's just fb, which will equal my times a. Okay, and now all we're going to do is basically just keep substituting things back in. So we know that oh, from over here, FB equals MYA, right? So we can take that and plug it in for FB over here. So now we're going to say FA minus MYA equals MOA. So if we rearrange that equation, we'll solve for FA, and FA will equal MYA plus MOA, okay? And so we'll do the same thing. We're going to take FA, and we're going to substitute it back into this equation over here. And now we'll plug in, and we'll say F minus MYA plus MOA, because that's what FA equals, what we just decided there equals mga, and once we rearrange that equation, let me slide this over so we have a little more room to work with, we'll see that f 
is equal to MYA plus MOA plus MGA. And if we factor our A out, we'll say that F is equal to MY plus MO plus MG times A. And if we then divide that over, we get that the acceleration of our system is equal to F, which is what the force that we're pushing it with, divided by MY plus MO plus MG, which is the total mass in our system. So we can make a more general rule from that and say that for a multi-body system, that the acceleration of that system, when all the objects are attached together, being pushed together, is equal to the net force over the total mass in the system. Okay, So that's just an application of Newton's second law now to multiple objects in a system. Okay, So A equals F net over M total. Where in this case, the only force acting on the whole system is what we defined earlier as being F. Okay, so F right here, oops, wrong button, is accelerating the entire system. Okay, and we know they all have the acceleration because they're all being pushed together. Just as in the lab we did previously, the acceleration of all the blocks together was the same because they were tied together by a rope or a string. Okay? This acceleration is all the same, but because these have different masses, and let's just assume that they all have you know, the same density, so this one is more massive than the yellow one's more massive than the orange one, the orange is more massive than the green one. We know that the forces between them, so the force FB is not the same as FA um, because they have those different masses being uh, acted upon with the same acceleration. All right. Another application of this is something called an Atwood machine. And an Atwood machine is where you have a pulley that has a string hanging over it and there are two masses. Again, let's assume that these masses um, have the same densities but then have this different, um, have diff same density, different volumes, so they have different masses. Okay, so we'll call this one mass one, the red one, and mass two will be the green one. Okay, if we were to set up a free body diagram of the red mass, we would see it's being held up by a rope or a string, so that's the force of tension, and the force of gravity is pulling it down. We'll do the same thing for the green mass. Notice that I have put subscripts here next to the FGs, symboling, symbolizing they have different forces of gravity on them, but I did not do that for the forces of tension. Okay, The force of tension in this rope, and we can just keep continue this over the top here, is going to be the same throughout. Okay, The reason at this point we can say that is we're ignoring our pulley basically. It's a frictionless massless pulley, so the pulley is not going to turn. Um, so our tension throughout our wire, or our rope, or our string, whatever it is, is going to be uniform throughout. There's no uh, knots in it. Everything is going to be completely the same. We have a massless uh, rope. It's not going to stretch, so the tension is the same throughout. So we can kind of treat them as if they were moving together, but in different directions. Okay. So we're going to set up our summation equation. We'll say the sum of the forces acting on block one will be Ft because it's up minus Fg1, which will equal M1 times A. And just common sense lets you know that our system is going to accelerate this way. The heavier mass, of course, is going to fall. The lighter one is going to rise. So notice the acceleration of block one will be in the same direction as the force of tension, both upwards. So they have the same sign in the summation equation. Block two will be very similar. Ft minus Fg2, it's going to equal negative M2A. Okay? Just like before when we did these kind of problems, you could have made the Fg2 positive and make down positive, but because I've said that Ft on this side was up and positive, we know that the block 2 is going to accelerate downward, so its acceleration has to have a negative sign. Okay, So if we look at this, and we're going to have two, we have two equations with two unknowns. We're going to solve for this in terms of M, and A, okay, and G as well. But so FT and A are our two unknowns. So we have a system of equations, we're gonna have to do some kind of substitution. 
So on this side, I'm going to substitute in, and I know that F or FG1 is M1 times G. So there's my first substitution. And now I'm going to solve for FT. I'm going to say that FT is equal to M1A plus M1G. Okay? So now I can take that and substitute it into my equation over here for FT. So now where I have FT, I'm going to put M1A plus M1G minus M2G equals negative M2A. All right? So I'm going to put all of my A's on the left-hand side and all of my G's on the right-hand side. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra, and I'm going to add negative M2A to the left side, and I'm going to subtract this M1G to the right, and I'm going to add M2G to the right as well. And so what I'll end up with is M1A plus M2A equals M2G minus M1G. Let me slide this up here because this is where our work is going to go from here on out. And if we look at this, we can factor out an A over here. So we'll get M1 plus M2 times A equals, now I'm going to keep the G in. I'm not going to factor it out yet because I want us to really think about what this means over here. Okay? We know this is the force of gravity on block two, this is the force of gravity on block one. And if you think about our Atwood machine that we had over here previously, I'm going to slide this down real quick. If it's accelerating in this direction, where it's going, I guess in this case clockwise, we know that the force of gravity on block two is pulling it down this way. The force of gravity on block one is pulling it down this way as well. So you can think of block two as accelerating the system in the clockwise direction, while the force of gravity on block one is slowing it down. So this right here is our net force. Okay, That is the net force. I'm not going to plug that in right now because I want to kind of keep this together, but that is our net force. And if we think about what we just solved for with the blocks, we would say if we rearrange this, if we divided both sides by m1 plus m2, we would get that A is equal to net force over total mass again. Okay, So we'll plug in and we'll solve for A, and we'll get that A for an Atwood machine is M2G minus M1G over M1 plus M2. And if we think about that in other terms, this is again net force divided by total mass. All right, so we're going to do some more problems with this in class and some more labs and we will get into it. So thank you for paying attention. Hopefully you understand how Newton's third law applies to calculations, and we will rock and roll with it coming up. Thanks!